Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another one of these Monday market updates. A big topic for you today, one that nobody's talking about yet, but could be one of the biggest topics over the next couple of years. China is buying up and what could be about to weaponize gold, about to turn it against uh, the rest of the world, especially the US dollar and the United States need to talk about that, the implications, and how you should uh, prepare for that and then how to invest for that. Uh, after that, stick around though because we're going to have our regular Monday market updates, giving you all the stocks not I'm watching, the stock market news you need to be ready for. Before that though, you know a big part of this channel is investing in those long-term trends, those universal forces that are shaping our world and the stocks that are going to benefit from that. We just finished up a, a video series covering a lot of those stocks, but if you didn't see that, look for the link I'll leave in the description below. It's a free report, the top five stocks in my portfolio, the five stocks that are going to be benefit most from those long-term universal forces and, uh, and really go much higher. Uh, it's a free report I put together with The Motley Fool. It's absolutely free, no obligation. You're just going to put in your email there. They're going to send you that free report. They're going to ask you if you want to sign up for their premium program. I use it, but there's absolutely no obligation. So look for that link below. Free, absolutely free report. The top five stocks to benefit from those long-term forces. I do want to get to that topic though, because this could be one of those big universal forces that changes everything for the markets. Okay, the World Gold Council reported its third quarter central bank buying of last week with a shock that yes could mean that China is about to weaponize gold as early as next year, as early as 2023. Here we see that report, a buying of gold for national bank reserves. That's the blue bar here. Um, you see the, the, the gold buying by year here. Blue is the, the national or the central banks. And you could see it jumped 300% from the same period last year. Okay, almost 400 tons of, uh, of gold was bought by central banks in, the, uh, in just the third quarter of, uh, of this year so far. And in fact, central banks bought more gold than any time in the last 55 years. That was when the U.S. was still on the gold standard, okay? So that's how big this was, uh, how big this buy-in was. The problem is here, we don't really know who is buying up all this gold or why. Okay, it does point to one country, but most central banks, they report their gold buying uh, to the IMF each quarter, but most notably, Russia and China does not. They, they do not report how much they buy, uh, as well as how much they buy through other sources. Here we can start with a chart from the World Gold Council that shows estimated gold reserves held by central banks around the world. Uh, here we see the U.S. on the far left here is presumably the leader with over 8,000 tons, uh, while China is a distant sixth with only 1,948 tons. Uh, that's just after Russia with about 2,300 tons. But remember, this is only what's estimated, and I'm going to show you how grossly underestimated this could be. First of all, at just under 2,000 tons, that would represent less than 3% of China's foreign exchange reserves held in gold, which is just ridiculously low. Okay, for example, uh, the U.S. holds about 66% of its reserves in gold, and most developed nations hold at least between 40 and 50% of their reserves in gold. Uh, gold is obviously just a stable store of value, even though the U.S. isn't on that gold that gold standard anymore. Backing gold, backing the dollars by gold one for one, uh, it is still a good good idea to have a lot of gold to back your currency because it just stabilizes that value and gives it a little bit more credibility. Right, so to say China is holding less than 3% of its reserves uh, in gold is just a blatant lie by the government. Now, China will sometimes report uh, come clean about its buildup in gold. Uh, in 2015, after six years of silence, they did come forward and say, okay, you know what? Our gold reserves are actually 600 tons higher than we had originally reported. Uh, so they did come clean at that point, supposedly, uh, you know, reporting all their gold, but, but I don't think they even reported all of it back then. Uh, but they've been silent since 2019. And we do have customs data that for the imports that go through Hong Kong, which is reported. Okay, that's totaled about 6,700 tons since 2000. Uh, China doesn't report its imports from Switzerland or Dubai, which really gives it another avenue of secrecy, right? Of the three imports, uh, the, the ports there, only, uh, only Hong Kong is reported. Now, most of the gold entering China does go through the Shanghai Gold Exchange, uh, and that is reported. We can estimate uh, holdings a little bit closer to the withdrawals from that exchange, which have been about 22,000 tons since 2008. So just since, since 2008, China has imported or China has withdrawn from the Shanghai Gold Exchange 22,000 tons. Okay, so think about that number in relation to that 2,000 tons the central bank actually reports uh, as holding or, uh, you know, the, the estimates for reserves in China. 
Now, the People's Bank of China, the central bank there, does not buy from the China, Shanghai Gold Exchange, okay, because obviously it couldn't be secret when it did that. Uh, and the Chinese army is also expected or reported to be another major buyer, and they don't report their buying either. But now, putting this all together, so just from the sources we know or can estimate, uh, you know, customs out of Hong Kong, gold mining, uh, and what little the government does report, we know that China holds at least as much gold as the United States. And I want to put up that chart again to show you just how far off these numbers are. So the U.S. is reported to have uh, just over 8,000 tons uh, held by its central bank as of the qu third quarter 2022. Uh, China supposedly only has about 2,000 tons, but we know that uh, China is probably holding at least double that amount and upwards of 20,000 tons or more uh, as uh, worth well over a trillion dollars. That 20,000 tons at the uh, current uh, current price of gold would be worth over a trillion dollars. Of course, the question just comes back to why is China building up that massive and secretive hoard of gold and should be, wor be worried? What, were they, what are they planning on using this for? And the most obvious answer is just a res as a response to the U.S. and a play on China dominance. Okay, uh, When the U.S. weaponized the dollar early this year by cutting off Russia, uh, so if you'll remember when Russia invaded Ukraine, the U.S. froze a lot of Russian assets held in central banks and held internationally, uh, held in dollars. Basically, the U.S. said dollars held by Russia anywhere, uh, you know, in other central banks or reserves outside of Russia, they put a hold on those. They froze that, which had never been done before. Uh, the U.S. had never tried to weaponize the uh, the U.S. dollar held by a lot of other, uh, uh, held by central banks, right? The U.S. is the world's reserve currency. A lot of central banks, besides those holdings in gold, they hold their reserves in dollar just, just to give their, their own economy, their own currency stability because, of course, the dollar is the most stable uh, stable currency in the world. So a lot of other central banks hold those dollars. And uh, what the U.S. did, did uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine was really unprecedented. So it really sent a shock through the global economic system. You know, that had never been done before. And I guarantee you, China is looking for an alternative considering it holds $3 trillion in U.S. dollars uh, as a reserve. Okay. So China holds a lot of, you know, $3 trillion in the U.S. dollar, in the greenback as part of its reserves. It is looking for an alternative to that in case, you know, the U.S. and China ever come to, uh, come to blows and the U.S. tries to weaponize the dollar once again. So first, China is likely trying to really secretly shift its reserves from dollars into gold. Uh, but there's also another motive here, I think. You know, hoarding gold may also be a way to kind of partially back its own currency or, or a digital currency, giving it more credibility as a reserve currency. Okay, we already know that China is trying to become a much bigger player on the world stage, trying to uh, promote its currency as a as an alternative to dollars and as a world uh, world reserve currency and this would be a big move towards that if it was mostly backed by by gold like the US is backed 66% by gold you know in those in those foreign reserves if china had more foreign reserves in gold that would give its uh, its own currency the one very much much more stability and much more use as a reserve currency now, the problem for China is it can't report all this gold all at once because that level of hoarding, if China just came out and said, okay, we have upwards of 20,000 tons or more of, of gold, the largest gold uh, ho hoarder in the world, then that would cause a surge in the value of its own currency as well as the price of gold and possibly even a collapse in the dollar, right? That would uh, take away a lot of credibility from the dollar, not to be the world's reserve currency, not to have the that larger backing by gold, um, and that would devalue a lot of China's own remaining dollar reserves. Right? Uh, that isn't uh, isn't far in coming uh, to a head. Right? I think uh, I think they're going to have to come clean on a lot more of their gold reserves in the future, and that is going to start that shift. That's going to start that shift from the dollar as the reserve currency. It's going to increase the price of gold, increase the value of the yuan, and decrease the value of the dollar. So what is clear here is that China is really setting itself up to challenge American leadership on that global stage. Okay, it, it will continue to build up that gold reserve and slowly admit to how much it has until it comes clean and, and just dumps it all on the world. Uh, backed into a corner, it could weaponize that gold. Again, like I said, you know, as the U.S. weaponized its dollar against uh, Russia, China, in turn, could weaponize gold. It could come out and say, hey, we hold all this gold. We don't need dollars anymore. We're dumping dollars on the world stage uh, on all that U.S. Treasury debt that we've accumulated. We're dumping that on the market to cause a collapse of the dollar and a collapse in those U.S. Treasury bonds. 
We are just coming into what Goldman Sachs is saying is going to be a next super cycle, commodity super cycle, like we saw in the 70s and early 2000s, when the price of everything from oil and copper and gold just jumped. We have been talking about this lately uh, with the copper story that we did a couple of weeks ago, easily the biggest multi-year force that, that will come into play or on the market over the next five years. But also in oil, other commodities we've been talking about, nation, we are just not producing enough of these commodities to meet the demand going forward. Okay, that's in copper, that's in oil. That is in, uh, you know, in gold, evidently here. Uh, that's going to make it easier for governments like China to weaponize their own stockpiles. Now, for the gold story, I do prefer buying the miners or the ETFs that cover the miners rather than the physical gold uh, a lot of times. In this case, you have a miners like Newmont here, ticker NEM, uh, which is a major gold miner between Newmont and Barrick. They are the largest gold miners in the world. This is a Barrick Gold, ticker GOLD. You've also got the uh, broader the broader miners like uh, the Van Eck Gold Miners ETF. That's ticker GDX. Uh, any of these are going to pay you that dividend yield while you wait, uh, while you wait on those gold prices to spike higher, unlike the physical gold itself, which is going to pay nothing. Okay, so you can invest in physical gold through, uh, you know, the spider sh shares, the trust shares, or through physical gold itself, but that is going to pay you no dividend uh, while you wait. And as interest rates go up, then the value of gold tends to uh, come down a little bit because, because investors can get an interest rate, a higher interest rate somewhere else. Uh, instead of holding that gold. Now, we've also tr talked about in this commodities theme, we've also talked about copper with uh, Freeport McMoran, that's ticker FCX, and Southern Copper, ticker SCCO. A few weeks ago in that video, uh, many of these stocks have options available for a little bit more leverage if you are uh, if you want to go that, or for the really brave out there, you can buy the futures contracts on these commodities. But either way, you cannot ignore this trend. Lower than expected, actually, for once. So that would be a strong positive for the market. Don't forget to get your free report by clicking on the link in the description, free report, the top five stocks in my portfolio, the five stocks I'm buying. Click on the video to the right for how to invest in the coming 2023 recession. Join the community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.